question. If your bosses or your company want you to do something with which you don't agree morally, you might even have an argument legally, but we'll explore that. Can you tell your boss I don't want to do it? I just don't agree with the morals of this. I'm sorry. What do you mean you don't agree with the morals? I want you to make these sales. Of, mm. Yeah, but I don't, I don't like what I'm selling, or I don't like the company that wants to buy it, or I don't like the chief executive, or I don't, I don't want to do it. Now... This is on a far grander scale, indeed a global scale, as it were, as it is reported that civil servants overseeing arms exports to Israel have requested to cease work immediately over the fears they could be complicit in war crimes in Gaza. Look, put simply, these are the men and women who process the orders for the arms, the weapons, the bullets, the guns, the missiles, to go to Israel, worth around, around £40 million the last year for which we have figures, which is 2022. It's understood that the PCS, Public and Commercial Services Union, which acts for civil servants, wants an urgent meeting with the department to discuss, and I quote, the legal jeopardy faced by civil servants who are continuing to work on this policy. Sky News saw this letter sent earlier in the week. It says, given the implications for our members, we believe there are ample grounds to immediately suspend all work. We request you meet with us urgently. Now, Labour MP John McDonnell of course, former Shadow Chancellor, was a founding member of the PCS Union Group in Parliament, said following a government's instruction is not a defence when it comes to a charge of war crimes. He says civil servants should not be put at risk. The Rome Statute covering war crimes is clear. Following a superior's instruction is not a defence when it comes to charges of war crime. Now, if you are of a certain age, you will recall that that was really brought in after the atrocities of the Second World War when, of course, the Nazis were running Germany and the defence offered by a lot of Germans in the military and elsewhere was, and I do this with no comedy at all, I was only carrying out orders. And we all know what some of those orders were as regards the annihilation of gypsies, homosexual, political prisoners, Jews and others. I was only carrying out orders. That's the Rome Statute. Would it apply here? Can a civil servant say to his, her boss, I'm sorry, I really do have an issue here. I think we're committing a war crime. I am just not going to process that email, process that order. Well, let's put it to Dave Penman, who's General Secretary. Now, this is a different union, I had the FDA, but they act for senior civil servants, and he joins me now. Yes or no to this possible action in your view, Mr Penman? Good morning. Uh, well, it's a complex and difficult situation. Very. I think, I think we have to separate two things out. For a civil servant, you can have a moral objection to what the government does, but there's nothing really you can do about that. Your job as a civil servant is to act on the instructions of minister. It's a democratically elected government. People who join the civil service know that. They won't always agree with government policy. Um, but if it's a simply a moral objection, you really get no choice. You either implement that or you leave the civil service, and all civil servants know that. It's different when it comes to a potential legal challenge. Um, and clearly that's the, the issue here. As, as you've, you've talked about in terms of... Um, uh, the, the, the guest you had on yesterday that, you know, there are yep. serious figures who have been in government in the diplomatic world and, uh, you know, former national security advisors who are raising these concerns about whether the government is now in a position around these arms exports, whether it's breaking its own rules around the sale of arms where there's a, a, a legitimate concern about they're going to be used to break international humanitarian law. And civil servants have their own legal obligations under the Civil Service Code to uphold the rule of law. So I think we're in grounds of where this is a legitimate question to be asked and the government really need to settle it. They need to get on with this. The Foreign Secretary said nearly a month ago that they were getting definitive legal position. They're backtracking on that now and I think what everyone needs to know is what is the settled government view on the legal position? Prior to that, Mr Penn, for the protection of your members, would you consider consulting or getting legal advice for your members and what they should do in this? <laughs> I mean, we, we've done that in the past over a number of issues. We are currently doing it around the Rwanda Safety Bill, where there's a potential that the government are talking about ignoring orders from the European Court, which potentially would break international law. And where would that leave civil servants? I think what's really important to understand here is government doesn't do things. Civil servants do things. So when the mm -hmm. government decides to do something... And if that means potentially breaking the law, they're asking individual civil servants to do it. And that's where they raise legitimate concerns 
and have a legitimate expectation that the government will explain to them and make clear that what they have been asked to do is not to break the law because their obligations under the civil service code and the, and it's not it's not the same in the foreign office as a separate code but it's equivalent is actually a legal obligation it's not just a moral obligation as a civil servant to uphold the rule of law the civil service code is covered in statute you have a legal obligation so you end up with this potential conflict what a minister's asking you to do and what your own code is telling you under law that you're supposed to do and that's why ministers need to bring about clarity for civil servants on this issue enjoyed our time together dave thank you dave Pemman, your general secretary of the fda union just to stress that's not the union directly involved in this but they represent senior civil servants so it does come back to this slightly tricky issue of the morality of what you're sought to do just to give you some of the background rishi sunak has come under growing pressure of course to suspend those arms sales they're still currently there after that horrific airstrike in Mon- on Monday, Monday night. And there's, again, the union is seeking, or would point to, the letter signed by more than 600 lawyers, including former Supreme Court judges, saying that their belief is that UK is in danger of breaching international law by continuing to arm Israel. What's the role of civil service? Should it be totally apolitical, Ben? Morning. Well, good morning. Um, it, it should be. Um, and the, the role of civil servants when they're working in government ministries is obviously to follow the instructions of ministers. The idea that they could find themselves in a war crimes tribunal as a result of not sanctioning Israel, I don't think stands up to any scrutiny. I mean, there's a lot of nonsense that's talked about international law. Um, but really what they're saying is, You'll remember that it's it's essentially private companies in the UK that are selling a very small amount of arms uh, to to Israel. Um, And what what is being asked for the debate at the moment is whether Israel should essentially be sanctioned by the UK government. But the idea that you would face a war crime challenge for not sanctioning a country, I think, is spurious. Never happened before. It never happened before. But of course, if you were nervous about it and you saw the story yesterday of more than 600 lawyers and academics, including some former Supreme Court judges, that would increase your level of anxiety, would it not? Uh, I don't. It, it certainly shouldn't if you're working at that level in the civil service. Um, I think this is brinkmanship. We've seen it before. Um, and, you know, whilst this issue is of concern, it's a debate that should take place in the public forum, should be dealt with by elected officials. Um, the, the bigger concern I think it raises is that is, is that we can't have civil servants throwing their toys out of the pram every time the government does something that they personally disagree with, because that, that puts great pressure, I think, on a, on a democratic system. Ben, thanks for your time. Sorry to have delayed you. I hope I haven't inconvenienced your morning. Ben Harris-Quinney writes for the Daily Express and is chairman of the Bow Group. Listening to that, let's get first to uh, Nick in Holland Park. Nick, should they have the right to be able to say, I have real concerns about this, I'm not going to do it? Morning. Hello, no, definitely not. And actually, uh, I find this the most pathetic uh, virtue, empty virtue signalling. The idea that they're really trying to protect themselves legally is just ridiculous. What are they doing, um, do you think, then? What are they doing? I, I think it's basically blatant anti-Semitism. By the way, I, I actually told your, your researcher, I, I have a very close family member who works in the civil service. And I know from the get-go, I'm talking one week after the Hamas attack, a number of civil servants, I don't know the exact number, immediately said they would not work on the post post-Brexit general trade deal with Israel. Nothing to do with um, arms, specifically with arms sales. You know, we're talking avocados, okay. diapers, whatever. Yeah. And they were allowed, They were, and this was nothing to do with the union, this was individuals just saying, I'm not working on a trade deal with Israel. By the, uh, by the way, the same individuals who apparently were working on trade deals with Saudi Arabia, um, uh, China, you know, other fantastic yeah. liberal democracies, and, the, and they were allowed to, walk, to just walk off the, uh, the Israeli trade deal and be reassigned to others and now i'd love to double dare anyone from the civil service to phone up and say that didn't happen and that was well nick i'll tell you what don't go don't go i don't know if it was from the civil service but you think it sh- they should not be just doing their jobs nick uh, david in south woodford i think <coughs> is going to tell you that you're wrong you you don't agree with that david is that correct um yeah morning nick no i don't agree with it because your contract employment no one should be uh, forced to do anything which may be illegal so a simple common law contract, you cannot do anything which is legal. But we don't know. So nothing to do with where, where do you see the illegality, David? It's not been shown to be well, illegal. Well, it, no, listen, we, you've had, uh, you, and you say 600 lawyers, I think the figure's now nearly 800. Top lawyers, QCs, uh, judges of the highest court in the land, saying 
that we're breaking uh, international law. You just have to turn your TV on. You don't have to be you know, Lord of the Year to realise what's going on. Right, Israel, Israel has today announced they'll open another crossing. Right. To, let, and and the, okay. the Netanyahu's let, office said this will prevent a humanitarian crisis. Yeah, let, let's Why are they stay... saying that now when for months okay, David. they were saying there is no crisis, there's enough aid going okay, so in. I'm not cutting you off at all. You're, you're still on the line. I just wonder if we can limit to the British civil service and get Nick's response to David, what you said. Nick, you're talking with David. Good morning again. Yeah, I just find it sort of, you know, borderline anti-Semitism. And I just want to conclude, Nick, by saying that they, the civil service was fully earned my regular nickname for them, which is the Sniddle Service. Okay. Absolutely pathetic. David, it's, it's anti-Semitism, plain and simple, says Nick. Oh, come on, Nick, it's not anti-Semitism. Criticising crimes is not anti-Semitism. You had many Jewish lawyers and QCs signing this letter. Nick? They can always can always find always find people to be anti this, but the core thing is they're not they're not breaching. It's not a breach of contract. They should just get on and do it. It's just empty virtue signalling. The whole the whole thing. And, and by the way, does this mean now that uh, border force patrol will refuse to process the passports of visiting Israelis? Or <laughs> I mean, you know, where where do you, where do you stop? I mean, Nick, David, another point that Nick made: these same men and women presumably are happy to work on Saudi Arabian deals if. We're going to look at what are believed to be repressive, dangerous regimes. Surely we can't have this individual sort of treatment, can we? No, this, I, we all believe in the rule of law. When a case goes to the highest international court, Saudi Arabia are not in there before the ICJ. If they were, same would apply to them. So Israel is facing accusations and it's, 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 it's contesting the proceedings. So it's taking part. There is a judgment. We all know what the judgment is. OK, we know the opinion of these top lawyers in this country, hundreds of them, right. and we're still saying there's no breach of international law. All right. Final word on this for you, Nick. Final response and I'll move on. Oh, I, 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 I have nothing to add to what, I, to what I've already okay. said. I just don't believe, don't believe any of what they're saying. All right. Nick, thank you. David, thanks for your response. Give me an opportunity to get to some of the emails, texts and tweets that are coming in. June in Wimbledon. Are the civil servants actually at work? I thought they were all still working from home. Well, I mean, that's a fair point. But even if you can work from home, you're still possibly going to have to uh, work on some of these deals or some of the proposals to sell the arms. So that's where the problem might be.